Have you got exams? Do you need to revise but you just can't? Do you keep procrastinating? Well, I'm here to sort that all out for you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Chloe Kendall and... Where are the glasses? Where did I put those stupid glasses? Ugh. Here they are. Got them. Now to put them on. <clears throat> like I was saying, today's video is going to be very different from all last week's videos. This week I'm actually going to be teaching you something, and that is... How to revise or study for an exam. If you're anything like me, and you have exams in the c upcoming months, then don't worry. I'm here to help you study or revise. I've got many methods to help you revise or study, like... The quick and easy timetable. I actually made that timetable for school, because that's something we had to do, but you can just make a timetable for fun. And now I'm going to teach you how to make one. You're going to need an iPad or any other electronic device. Also going to need this app. Don't worry if you don't have the app. You can use Microsoft Word. You're also going to need a printer. But don't worry if you don't have a printer. You can produce this by hand. You're also going to need some glue. Now, I recommend glue sticks and not PVA because PVA gets messy and it might get everywhere. You're also going to need card. Don't worry if you don't have any card. I don't have any either. So I just used paper instead. So what you do is once you get onto Excel, you're going to need to go on blank workbook. And you're going to have to type in revision timetable or whatever you want to call it on the top of it. And you're, and well, people lay out their timetables in different ways. I personally lay out mine by typing in the day up here and all the times down here. You can make this for every single day, including the weekend, all day, like I did. Or you could just keep it short and snappy and just use after school on school days. I also find it useful to go on to insert and then go on to table. Because it creates a table. But if you type everything in first, then it puts it all on the table automatically. This did take me about an hour because I did a long version. But don't worry, it might not take that long. And then you're just going to need to print it off once you're done. Like I said, you can produce it by hand. And once you've printed it, you can do pretty much whatever you like with it. You can just leave it. But what I did was I trimmed the edges with some scissors. And I got some paper. You can use card if you have some, but if you don't, just use paper. And I used the um, glue stick. And what I did was I stuck some paper on the back of this to make it stronger. And there you have it. Your timetable. Or if you're not keen on timetables, you can make a revision folder. So this is how this works. You're only going to need this folder and these little plastic wallets here. Now, I got these from Wilkinson's as you can see. But um, you will probably be able to find it in a local shop. There you have. Now buckle up kids. Things are about to get serious. What you do is you take notes from a certain lesson that you feel that you need to revise in the most. For me, that would personally be science or geography. And once you've made notes, put them inside one of the plastic wallets. In fact, I'm going to take some notes now. Here I have some geography notes. These notes go inside the plastic wallet. And as if by magic, the piece of paper is inside the wallet. The magic wallet. What you do from here is you open up the folder and then you open this bit and then what you do is these little holes here you put that in there close it up might be a bit, a bit loud and then what you do is you close the folder and every time you write notes you keep them in a plastic wallet and put it in your folder or even better, you can keep your timetable in there as well. And now just a few tips to stop with the procrastination. Oh wait, where are the glasses? If you keep procrastinating, like me, then you may find these very useful. If you're used to watching TV whilst doing your revision, then just try to turn it off. If you absolutely can't turn it off, then 
just try to turn it down to the lowest setting possible. It's fine if you listen to music whilst doing your homework. I mean, sure, I do that a lot. But the thing is, you can get too caught up in the music. Try to make it a song that motivates you to keep going, even if that song is your favourite song, like me. But that does not matter. You can listen to music because I find that helps me with my revision. But don't listen to music for too long. If you can, turn off your phone and every other electrical appliance you have in your house. Also, if you need to do research on the internet, try not to get caught up in other things. Just try to, your best to focus on your research. That's really hard, but I mean, just keep trying. I mean, try to get rid of that resistance. Like, try to resist going onto other websites that you do not need to for your revision. I mean, I find myself doing that a lot, but then I just get back on track. That's what you should do if you find yourself procrastinating, just get back on track with your revision. And here's one that I find hard. Try to resist the urge to play games when you're meant to be doing your homework. Sure, it's fine to play games when you're taking breaks in between subjects. Just try your best to not get too caught up in your game. I would say take a break of about five minutes every time. Oh, that reminds me, I've got to tell you the best times to revise for subjects and which subjects you should revise for. Everyone has weak subjects and strong subjects. You just need to find out which ones they are. I would say my personal weak subjects are geography and science and my strong subjects are maths and Spanish. However, everyone's different. So on my timetable, I have a lot of geography and science revision, but that doesn't mean you don't have to spend like five days a week revising for the subjects that you're not good at and only the rest of it, two days, revising for subjects that you're good at because you still need to revise for each subject equally. Just try to spend more time revising a little bit more on your weaker subjects. Also, you should revise each subject for about half an hour and then take a break and then go on to another subject. Make sure you keep switching subjects so that you don't get bored during your revision. You also need to find out how long it is until your exams. And I don't mean roughly, how many days you have until your exam, start counting down, and also, here's one that I find very difficult, but just bear with me. I usually look at my calendar and my iPad and wherever I look at the time, and I think, oh, I've only got three weeks until that test. I've got ages. I'm not revising yet. I would recommend, if you've got very important exams, then you should start studying about a month before them. My exams are in a month. So what I will do is I will start revising very soon. Also try to avoid last minute revision. I'm always finding myself doing last minute revision but please do not do any last minute revision unless it's absolutely necessary. You should know when to revise. Don't worry if you go a little bit off timetable. That is completely fine. Just try to stick to it. If I don't feel like revising I will just try my best. I will try to motivate myself and just do it. Just do it! There's your motivation. Well, I may not be an exam expert, but I'm definitely a test expert. I'm a test spurt. Yeah, I like that, test spurt. Even though the only serious test I've ever had to take is the 11 plus.